Hi guys, good morning. This is uh, the second day of the challenge. So I've been watching the videos yesterday from the first day. Today, first I'm taking my daughter to school. She's lying on the couch. And she's hiding. So that's why I'm doing the 30 day challenge. It's one of the big reasons why you want to give a better life to your family, to your kids. We just watched the iPad the entire day, or iPhone, not the entire day, but just a few minutes before school. So, if you want to see what I'm doing today, uh, just keep watching this video and you see me exactly doing the step 2 of the 30 day challenge. It's a little bit of accountability for me, I didn't even do my hair, just got dressed and taking the kid to school and then starting the one funnel away challenge. So. If you don't know what the 30 days challenge is or the one funnel away challenge and you think you might like to do the stuff that I'm doing right now, building my business online, getting help from uh, the ClickFunnels, two comma comma coaches. So check out the rest of the video. So good morning again. The second video I'm making today and I didn't even start yet. So this is my, like my morning routine. You saw how I got my daughter uh, out of bed and got her dressed. She's lying on the couch watching some uh, YouTube before she goes to school. So then we got the bike. I drop her off at school. I can't see shit. What is this one? Uh, then I dropped her off at school. And then it's time for me and my friend who's lying in the back to go out for a walk. That's totally awesome. I left my sunglasses. Right at home. So they should be in here somewhere. So, uh, yeah, let's continue with the story. So, there's a big bull bull lying in the back seat. He's like nine years now, and I'm gonna go for a little walk. So, yesterday's training day was about feeling, feeling fast and feeling quick. Uh, many times feel many times get up on the horse and feel again so i watched a video from russell bronson where he explains what he's done in the past and that not all his stories were successful or no, not all of his entre entrepreneurial things were uh, successful so what i got out of that video is that it takes 99 times find a way how to work a light bulb or oh, how not to work a light bulb but there's only one good one so you have to go through those 99 tests just to get to the right solution and that's totally awesome because I've done a ton of shit in the past I started so many businesses I failed so many times Rasta pasta He's like, we're there. Yes, we're there. So. It's an amazing place to go to a walk, for a walk here. So, let me just mumble in this video. So it's the second day I watched uh, Russell Bronson's uh, training of Funnel Hacking Life where he said that, where he shared his story about all his failures. And I've been failing quite a lot. But that doesn't mean I'm staying down after a failure. No, that means like, oh crap, this doesn't work, let's try the next thing. And that makes it look for other people to go like, oh, here it goes again. But I'm just testing, testing. I'm testing to find the ultimate way to make recurring income to be actually the dad that I always wanted to be for my daughter to enjoy. Yeah, it's really hard operating the telephone, walking the dog, everything. So, but it's all about overcoming your fear. Overcoming your fear. 
nothing can knock off in less than 10 minutes. Go to the first slide, started going through. And uh, when we got to the end, we got to the stack and the clothes, we did it. So, second day of the challenge uh, continues. So I've been watching the, the videos and Russell's video and it's all about storytelling. It's not uh, one piece of content and it's technical. So he tells story after story after story. And the thing is that points people to the attractive character. So I got tons of stories and everybody got tons of stories. But the problem is that you can see my Bitcoin attempt. <laughs> um, the point is that I have all these stories in my head, but I'm actually made it a task today to write those stories out. I started businesses, failed dramatically, started new businesses, I created web shops and ran into problems that I didn't want to have. I got sued by Kawasaki because I sold afterparts and tons more. I so all these stories, anyway, all these stories are being written down today. So, do you want to know what I got so far? It starts uh, at school and how that goes and my first job and then I end up at Vodafone, how I started the hosting company uh, because I automated a lot of stuff uh, in Vodafone so just to make it so that they couldn't fire me I documented all the procedures that they had, all the call out uh, things and I made a Joomla website and linked everything in a document manager. So that was awesome. And people noticed that I was making these websites, everybody in Vodafone noticed, or don't know if I can say the name, in the Red Telecom Company, they noticed. So I started um, making websites for other people. But not by just coding it, I actually thought from, oh, okay, I need some residual income. And that's the first time when I thought from, oh, let me just build a website, but not only build a website, let me do the hosting for them. I sell them a domain name as well, that gives me like 12 bucks uh, annually. And if you make them an awesome website, the revenue from the hosting and the website will come in month after month. So I did that. Uh, after that, I said, to those colleagues from okay uh, I can do SEO it was huge at the time and you could rank really easily so I kind of sold a few different services and I figured out that that was a cool way to make some money except they were all cheapskates cheap how do you say that they're not willing to spend money so I did all this for like a hundred bucks I made your website and hook you up to a 10 bucks uh, hosting thing uh, which had backups and everything but because I had the hosting reseller package I started uh, going around and experimenting with that and I'm just trying to get my phone into the stand without killing the video so no, I have both hands free um, so I started researching the hosting packages and I seen OS Commerce and there was another web shop system, shopping cart system and the thing is I set up a web shop because I thought hmm, well I'm selling hosting and this and this and it's all passive and that's cool but if I sell like a pocket bike which was like a big trend and I started getting into like marketing and SEO and stuff like that. So I went to eBay and I live close to Germany. So Germany is like two miles over to the left or right. And in Germany, sometimes everything's cheaper because they had a different yeah, coin than here. So I could get pocket bikes there for 120 bucks. Drive into Germany to pick them up drive back and sell them here for 250 so I thought mm, that's an ROI that you need to get so I set up a web, uh, a web shop called pocket bikes uh, pocket bikes.com no it's not pocket bikes it's pocket racing.com just let me write that down pocket racing.com and I still think that website exists 
it's just not active in a payment method, but it's still ranking on SEO and stuff and it's still getting visitors. So, after setting up the shops, going to Germany, picking up the bikes and selling them here, I noticed that I didn't even think about how to ship them. So most of the things I shipped, but because I was working at Vodafone, I had a lot of free time during the night shift and it was network management. And you would basically sit, stare at the screen, do a few tasks, which I automated. So I had a lot of free time, a lot of spare time, to do all kinds of foolishness. So I bought myself a little diesel and started delivering the pocket bikes. And it was really cool because uh, an entire campus bought like six pocket bikes and delivered them. And they had a little race that they would drive around and on the pocket bike, then had a pit stop, drink some beer. <laughs> That's really cool. Then drive another round. And it was really cool for like four or five rounds until somebody really crashed. Another thing that wasn't so cool was that somebody got um, a pocket bike off of me and uh, it didn't really have policy pages and disclaimers and stuff like that. So a dad came and he's like, well, my son bought this, but he wasn't 18 and he got pulled over and this and this is the fine and it wasn't allowed by the cops, so you should pay me this and this amount. So then I just stopped doing the pocket bikes, but I still had the, uh, the, the web shop. So I started going into RC, remote controlled cars, and then uh, started Nitro RC shop, but still you get many, many, many returns. So that's because people try a helicopter and they break it and they send it back. And drop shipping wasn't that far that you could just, I couldn't just send it back to the supplier, I would just lose that money on a broken thing and would still refund my customer just to keep a 5 star rating. So that really didn't work out. Um, still have those shops, they are inactive. Um, some of them are active. I got 125 uh, web shops uh, or domain names. So after that, I thought, hmm, Google AdSense. Passive income. I would just place advertising on websites from my customers with my own account. So I would make money if somebody goes to the website and Google's uh, pocket bikes and there's a little ad and they click on it, I would make like two or three cents, sometimes ten cents. So I thought this is amazing because I work at Vodafone at night shift. There's like 600 offices there. They all have a computer, so I just log in at night. <laughs> I'm really stupid. And log in and click, go to those websites and click on the ads. And I made a few hundred bucks that way. And then I got suspended, <laughs> which is pretty obvious. So uh, that's a cool thing. I got suspended and couldn't uh, use Google AdSense for 10 years. I finally got approved like a few years ago again on my own name so I made a website I had a website for kids my nieces were just born and they were always um, I thought I made a website for them it's called bollabuck.eu and uh, it's just got color plates and everything so I uploaded a ton of color plates during the night shift I actually set up uh, my sister's Google AdSense account and just made money off clicks and uh, did a lot of SEO and stuff like that. Um, that kind of worked So I thought I'd be selling services and marketing. So I went more into marketing. And then I started my SMS teams, my SMS service. Because I was in the telecom, people were making money with SMS services, SMS gateways. It was still back in the day, it was WAP. You still have, let me see if I got a phone, from the Google phone somewhere. Be like a razor hair or something. I don't know if you know those phones. Then I like... toss it all. It's been lying here for 10 years. <laughs> See? So you had WAP gateways, and people were making money with the erotic advertisement. So you got these websites here in Holland that after 10 o'clock at night you see those. Uh, uh, girls on the television and you can call them and you can send them a text and 
they charge you one euro thirty for the bags that you send. So I thought, hmm, that's cool. We can make money of that because Vodafone Telecom, I know exactly how this shit works. We're gonna make money with this. So what I did was, and I didn't know before, is that I created my first free plus no shipping offer. So I created an entire value ladder and never thought about a value ladder until I read the dot-com secrets book from Russell, which is right here. And he explains that in a business, to get more customers in, you should offer something for free and then gradually build up to the most expensive thing. So that's exactly what I did and I'm trying to find the value now. Here it is. So you offer something for free, that's the beat. Then you have a front-end offer, a middle offer and a back-end. So that's exactly what I did, but I, this book hadn't been written yet. So I offered a free SMS service, which I just went out to a company and went like, oh, I just want to resell your services. And they gave me an account and I could create multiple accounts on my, on my own. So I could charge people for access. So in the beginning, let me draw out this value ladder for you on the thing behind me, no, on the people right in front of me. So the first thing I offered was a free account and if they would sign up, they would make, I think, 50 cents for every cent SMS. So they got a login and they would um, base, uh, create an advertisement somewhere on like, a Dutch Craigslist, like Marketplace, marketplace.com but then and hell and then um, they would say hi I'm Judy you can text with me here and here and people would actually sign up and those people would get paid for every message they would get 55 cents so that's cool but there was one euro 30 that would be charged to the customer and I pocket the rest of that one 130 minus those 55 so that's like 80 cents into my bank account so as I got more customers, they went like, yeah, um, is there a possibility that we could be uh, earn more because you make 85 cents? And I went like, oh, that's okay. If you pay me an annual fee or a monthly fee, which is like 50 bucks, and you make a certain amount of sales on the SMSs and come on the SMSs, I'm willing to bump your a profit margin up but you have to give me 50 bucks a month and they were like okay so they paid me 50 bucks most of the customers did and after that I created my first upsell and I'm actually thinking about this now and it's filling in the value ladder again the dot-com secrets book it wasn't written back then but I offered the free service and then I offered if they paid me like monthly 50 bucks, they would get a bump in their commission. So after that, I said, oh, you know what would really help you because they're posting everywhere on like a website that would really help you because you can make profiles of all these beautiful women, which all these uh, yeah, guys, it's like a dating profile back in the day. They could just uh, SMS them and they would get in contact and usually there was a, like a big fat woman or an old guy sitting at the other side and texting like hi I'm wearing this and I'm 60, uh, 60 years old and we should meet blah blah it's all yeah a little bit effy because I got a Scottish wife who came here like my wife is Scottish, not I got a Scottish wife. My wife is Scottish and she, she came here and saw those adverts and she's like, what the heck, you're selling hookers on the television here in Holland? And that's what happens. But they are not selling hookers, they're selling like fake profiles and you can text them. So I started selling those people a website. I went like, okay, if you have your website, which I can make for the very cheap, I went like, oh, it's 50 bucks, or oh, no, 150 bucks to get your own website and it was just a template because I had my hosting service easy hosting Vodafone easy was back in the day and we did the hosting and it was with a colleague of mine we went like ah should do easy hosting easy I and then hosting and then um, we started offering those websites because there was residual income in that as well they paid me the domain name they paid me for the website a fee 
and uh, they paid for the hosting. At seven men, so another step in the value ladder. After that, I said like, ooh, you know what, I can do some marketing for you. If you give me some more money, I can place ads there and there and there. Or you can have a second profile. And that was my first, and I just noticed this because I was thinking about this today as part of the 30 day challenge, that this was like my first actual value ladder. Well, actually, when I think about it, it wasn't because I sold pocket bikes and then the, the e commerce web shop is like an upsell. That's not really comparable to a value ladder. But I would go like, hi, you got a pocket bike. Do you need a can of fuel? Do you need this? Or do you want this? Because um, you got plastic handles. Do you want the metal ones? If you fall on your face, you don't want to break your shit. So you should buy this. But the real surface based value ladder, that was my SMS service. So I'm just writing this down and I actually talk through the entire story so I don't have to write it down. So that was my SMS names. And I'll come back later as I'm writing all this down. I'm only halfway because this is like in 2004, 5. It's like a decade ago. Really scary. But I'm thinking about this, so if you want to think about your stories, just, it's quite funny though. I'm uh, just reminiscing a little bit about the failures, but I've got tons more to come. Because these are the bullets, all the businesses that I started, and a lot of failures that I had. Let me give you a slightly insight. I sold uh, old books. Amazon does that as well. Here you got Bob.com, so I went out to the market, dragged some books home, listed them on the website, and I'm like, oh, this book is worth 50 bucks. You know why? Somebody listed this as 50 bucks. Doesn't mean you're gonna sell it as 50 bucks. So I got an awesome collection of World War II books and all of crap still lying in the loft. Um, uh, somebody dragged me into affiliate marketing, uh, not affiliate marketing, MLM. I met a guy and he's like, oh, you like American cars? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I've seen the new one and um, you should come over and i show you mine. And he was working on an awesome car, but that car wasn't there. When I ran in, he showed me like folders and got my hopes up and how would you think that you could afford this would you be selling stuff and i'm like yeah selling stuff but i have the e-commerce background so i thought hmm, i'm looking for somebody who can uh, give me products send it to my customer so i don't have to do shipping and all the stress that i ran into with doing the e-commerce with the pocket bikes and stuff and he's like oh yeah i got an opportunity like that and he set up a meeting and before i knew it he was showing me uh, how to clean the table in the back, but he did it in a real sales, not salesy way. We were standing in the back and he's like, oh, that is a really dirty table. And I think he made it dirty. And then he went like, no, let me show you this. And he got some soap and he cleaned that. He said, oh, that's awesome stuff. So it's a really good product. I get this delivered monthly, blah, blah, blah. And you always need this. You could even eat this. And <coughs> without me knowing it, a big black guy named Joe, that was the friend who set up this meeting, was luring me into an MLM. Never heard of MLM before, but I was thinking about the possibilities. I got a great product, they want to ship it, I got a profit margin, they can do recurring, and obviously everybody needs the product. Look at this freaking table, it's so shiny. Plus, you can eat the soap. Why would you anybody want to freaking eat the soap? So the qualification, if you go out to the supermarket, you go like, this is great soap. But let me ask you a question. Can you eat this? No, of course not, it's soap. So, he locked me into an MLM. <laughs> and the cool thing is, I paid money, I went out and did the same thing that everybody does. I made a list, he's like, oh, got a list, mobile phones came out, made a list, started phoning people, I'm like, oh, awesome opportunity, he did the first meeting, I got like seven of my friends in, and they, if Facebook would 
be there back in the day they all would have unfriended me they have in real life so that was Amway and the cool thing is Amway doesn't allow you at least back in the day to sell your products online so that was Amway which I just told you about and I can check this I can check this books on the ball will continue down the line I even sold I don't know if I actually should tell you this. Um, it's like, yeah, we can get really cheap panties from... I'm not, uh, <laughs> uh, I should really not tell you this. Um, I made a, a web shop for somebody and he could get really cool panties and are really, really cheap because it was garbage quality. So we needed a hook to sell him <laughs> and he had quite a few. Uh, so we placed some ads because I had all these fake profiles of customers we placed ads that they those people that's another upsell <laughs> could actually <laughs> freaking awesome man i ah, don't know if i want to tell you this they could actually buy those panties online and the cool thing is <laughs> um, yeah you would buy clean panties for like a tunnel but you buy warm panties for like 25 bucks. <laughs> so that's an awesome idea. <laughs> and you could even ask where to be worn. So that's a thing that really didn't stick up because yeah, it's not a good, good model to follow. So I told you about the AdSense that I clicked them. All the ads made a lot of money and then got banned. Um, I did a car parts webshop. And the cool thing is, I built up this entire catalog class and doing our e-commerce back in the day was all about how good are you in uh, Transact SQL uh, or exporting databases. So I got a book, learned all about how to import this and this and that. And then a license plate search came up and that's on Amazon right now as well. So that didn't really work out because in the car parts you have to search for this specific type and everybody was used or getting used to search on license plate so that didn't work out for me i later hooked up with somebody with easy motive who did the easy thing which i think he stole from me by the way i think he actually patented it but he got the idea from me but uh, with him i made multiple web shops but in the the hosting thing just come back to the hosting back in the day you had YouTube was getting bigger and bigger and you had those YouTube clones. So I registered a site, Song Titles Finder, where you could look for song titles and it would just import a video from YouTube. Awesome! But apparently there are copyrights on all the videos of YouTube. That's what I learned back in the day. You would go like, oh, didn't you know that? Obviously I didn't know that. I just didn't know that some people would be checking on that. So all the videos that I uploaded, they got uh, removed from YouTube, I had to uh, yeah, manually update the entire site. I was like uh, trying to remember what software that it was, what made it possible to do that. Okay, but I made paint web shops. Uh, I'm just looking at the thing. Oh, back in the day, you had Teespring coming up, and I uh, bought a course. Obviously, I'm always about if you want to do something, you need to look at somebody who's already done it. So, this, that, for that reason, this is the best book ever. 30 people telling you how to get a 30 day plan to get out of the mess. So, I've got a t shirt course and tried selling t shirts and the list hasn't finished yet, so this is 24 minutes now about me ranting about my failed business opportunities and I'm not even halfway. So what I took away from Russell Bronson's story about the funnel hacker, one funnel away challenge, is that I'm... Some people thought I was a quit at school, because I quit school, started working in a factory and went back, but in this I'm actually pretty perseverant and I'm like a pit bull who just got stuck in it but why didn't you make it yet yeah that depends on your goal definition I work from home see my daughter every day make money with click funnels passively hope to scale more 
uh, with click funnels because no it's just a hassle to get sometimes new customers and I want to get more into the passive niche like coaching and this and this so that's why I figured out all this drop shipping and was coming up and e-commerce wasn't for me so I went to what did we do again oh yeah I started creating course my adult coloring books so digital products so I'm just gonna continue the list uh, maybe I'll update you in the next video about uh, the things that I have failed in so let's continue in the next video what, what you're writing?